Hey everybody. All right, so we're going on to the Pico. Uh, phase two. We'll call it phase two. I just want to give y'all a quick update. Now, one thing I failed to mention, and I should have, after anything that you're braising, you know, this beef tongue, it came to the boil, and what I did was I put it in the oven, starting out at 365, because it's already at a boil, and then I put it in the oven uh, for 365 to like 30 minutes, and then I turn it down to 325 so it'll cook a little slow. As you can see, as I poke it, see how it's starting to get tender? So we still got a couple more hours to go before that's tender enough to we'll take out. However, I figure we might as well move on to our Pico. So it is taking a little longer than the three and a half to four hour original. Let's say about three and a half to four. We put it in about what, 9.30? Mm-hmm. So 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, maybe 2 o'clock. Again, it all depends on the size of it and all that good stuff, but you really want to get tender. So if it takes more than four hours, maybe it takes four hours, 15 minutes, maybe it takes four, four and a half hours. But it's worth it's worth the wait. So we're gonna move on to the pico. Now I'm gonna do a little spin on my pico because I want some smoky flavor. So I got just uh, you know a big chunk of white onion, no oil. In your cast iron. Yeah, and chunk of red onion. And now the cool thing we're at the uh, farmers market today. We found some scallions or green onions, and they had the bulbs. The bulbs on them, so we get double duty. So not only do we get the greens to go in our pico, from the tops, we also get these right here, these beautiful little onions. So I'm going to throw those in. All I'm doing is roasting them. That's it. And I think I'm going to throw this half of tomato in there. So while that's doing that thing, I am going to go ahead. Now these tomatoes have been cleaned, washed and cleaned. Take this little metal guy here. Take the coming bowl. So as a recap, he is roasting or braising the beef tongue in the oven at 325 until it's tender and now he's gone on to make the pico with some, what are you calling this baby, With the, in the cast iron? I'm just roasting some onions, uh, basically I'm just trying to get some smoky char out of them. See this is, as they keep going I keep rolling them around. This is what you're looking for. I'm just trying to get a little smoky flavor out of them. That's all. Okay. That's all. You know. Instead of just raw onion. I'm, I mean, I'm going to put some raw onion in it. But I figured, you know, if I can add some more flavor, why not? Okay. So. I got the way. Tomato. So, basically what I did with the tomato. Cut it in half. Pull it now. If you're not comfortable with it, I did it. You can always take the vegetable peeler, have this in, get in there and get it out, just like this. And it comes right out. So, nice decent sized chunks. So dices? Dices. Okay. I call them chunks, you call them dices if you want to. Now I'm putting this into the same bowl I'm going to store it in. Because when you cook a pico or make a something like this, you want it to set up. So Give it time to marry all those yummy flavors. Yeah, let them get together and talk to each other and whatnot. Just come in. And you don't have to do it this way. That's just the way I do it. It's quicker. I mean, you can just slice it. Matter of fact, the next one I'll do, I'll just slice it in half and just chop it. Either way, just keep your thumb and your fingers back. Protect the hands. So you can come in here and just like that, turn them around, get them away, line them up. As another note, I never use the knife that he's currently using. He's much more comfortable with it, and I'm much more comfortable with a smaller serrated knife. Yeah, and honestly, with tomato, the better knife to use is this serrated one. The smaller serrated knife that yeah. I'm more comfortable with. Yeah. Um, it doesn't tear the tomato, but this knife right here, I sharpen it all the time. So, I don't think I need more tomato than that. Okay. Now, this onion, what I did was I came in here and I went this way, just like that. Mm hmm. Then turn it sideways. And you see? went into the side. And I went into the side. Oop, sorry. No problem. 
you know, hold the onion with your fingers back. You just want to try to get the best fine dice you can. And get no fingers. No fingers. Now when the onion gets to a point where it's unwilly, where it's kind of like unstable, turn it to the side. And get those and turn it back. And this goes to things for coming bowl that's going to go in our vegetable stock. Boom. And look through and make sure you have some uniform dices because I mean... Sometimes you miss some big chunks. Yeah, you don't want to miss no big chunks. Like I just did. Nobody says that'd be perfect. You're at home. So, I mean, you know. Shoot. Enjoy it. Do what you can. But don't turn, take, keep your eye off of this right here because you got to keep your eye on it. Just twist and turn it. You're going to get a little color. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn the heat. Oh, the heat was off. Hey. I, okay. <laughs> I told you the heat was off. I, I thought I turned it back on. My bad. But I mean, they seem to be yeah. smoking up pretty good. And that's why I love my cast iron because it keeps heat very well. It does hold heat. So don't go grabbing the handle of a cast iron. No. Please. I've done it so many times. So now he's chopping the green onion. This is something I cannot do the way he does it. I am a much slower chopper. But because of that, she don't cut herself as much as I do. I do not. So those are the tops of two green onions. Tops of two green onions and the bottoms are in the smoking. Yep. And I think I'm going to add a white onion. Okay. So we got red onion, white onion, green onion. This is wonderful. This pico is going to be delicious. Yeah, I know I'm making a little mess, but I'll clean up when I get done. What am I doing? I'm getting the key of green yoked. Oh, garlic's going in too? Yes, you gotta have a little garlic. Okay. Are you gonna smoke it? Nah. All right. This is gonna be my part of my salt content. Okay. But that would be cool if I did throw it in a smoke though. I'm just saying, you got a little bit of time. <laughs> Maybe next time. Okay. So the salt rub, the garlic salt rub, Take your knife, take your time. It's like a garlic salt paste even. Be right careful when you're doing this with your knife off the board, because I have sliced my finger going too fast. The better thing to use would be, where is it at? Bottom drawer, I think. Uh, I have a bench scooper. Show me again. Well, you can just scoop it up. You don't have one of those. Just use a spoon. Or a spatula. Or a spatula. See, these are taking on a nice color. They are. All I'm trying to do is get the smokiness out of them. That's it. So let those go for a little bit longer. And... A lime? Lime. We got some lemon juice in the fridge too. Yes. Just want to loosen up the cells so I can get the juice. So the zest and the juice of one lime. And it's been washed. Now, if you want more lime flavor or more zing, add two limes. It all depends on how much juice I get out of this one. I might go grab another one. Or you might just grab a lemon that we already have in the fridge. Yeah, or lemon. And that's looking good too. Everything smells wonderful. I really do wish Smell-O-Vision existed. Yeah, I wish smell of it existed as well, but I mean, I can have a feeling for some slap of vision <laughs> Some slap of vision would be nice. Okay, so that got too hot, so he kicked it off of the heat while he's continuing to zest the lime for the pico. Multitask. Boom, got the zest. Now I want 
The juice. The juice. Now, here's a cool trick. Saw this on the Food and Network one time. <laughs> Take a fork. It's called fork and a lime. Take your fork in there and just get up in there and get all that goodness out. My mama showed me that a few years ago. Yeah. And then again, I grew up microwave and T-bone steak, so, you know. This is all new. Hey, you live and you learn. Oh, did you tell them the story about the mashed potatoes? I did not tell them the story <laughs> about the mashed potatoes. I'll let you go ahead, because it might be more funny. Okay, so while Chris continues to make the pico, there was a time when he thought that mashed potatoes only came out of a box. He did not realize that you could make mashed potatoes out of real potatoes. <laughs> and one day, Jamie was going to make mashed potatoes, and he didn't understand, and he was like, what are you doing? And she's like, I'm making mashed potatoes. And he goes, well, where's the box? It's like, I'm making mashed potatoes out of potatoes. And so she made them, and a light went off, and from then on, Chris made the mashed potatoes better than anybody else has made the mashed potatoes. And he's gone on to add garlic and flavors and butters and yeah, great mashed potatoes now. But for the, the majority of his youth, he thought they came out of a box. So what are you adding to the pico now? Uh, cilantro. Cilantro, okay. I know you don't like it, but... You know what? Cilantro is a pico flavor. I will be okay. So I definitely am a person that tastes soap when I eat cilantro. Uh, but I will eat it. You know, because you said that the other day, I was researching why do people taste, you know, make like certain herbs, like rose water tastes like perfume to me. Mm -hmm. And there was an article, there's a receptor, it's a gene mm -hmm. in certain people's bodies that make cilantro or certain herbs taste like detergent or soap. Who knew? So I got that recessive gene. And cilantro then, tastes like soap. Yeah. So, that was probably about one, two, three, four, five, six sprigs. Okay. Fresh cilantro. I'm just going to roll it up. up. A little cigar. I'm going to run my knife through it one, two times. Turn it. And that's it. All and right. The reason I'm not chopping anymore because the more you chop fresh herbs, they bruise. So, boom. I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, no. And the jalapeno. Oh, and the jalapeno. Thank you. Here's your olive oil. Yep. And now you want to use the good stuff. This is the good stuff. And this is just my regular old cooking olive oil. Okay. Good, good stuff. Good. Regular old cooking olive okay, oil. Okay. You're going really fast there. So we use uh, Callisto. We also use another one called Daphne. Both are Greek. Uh, okay. Greek oils that I get from the Greek store off of Cheshire Bridge. And there's another one, Minerva. Now, to me, the seeds and the membrane where the heat is doesn't bother me. If you don't want it spicy, then take those out. Just use your fingers. Now, mind you. You could use a spoon so you don't. Yeah, but if you do use your fingers like I am, once I get done with this, I'm washing my hands with hot, soapy water. And don't touch any parts that you don't want burnt. Yeah, because your eyes will burn. And everything else. Leave the seeds in one of them, baby. I am. Okay. The smaller one. I hadn't tasted it yet. See how spicy, spicy it, is. it is. So I just come over here and get the rest of that membrane out. Okay. With this one. So let's see how spicy this is without the membrane. Not spicy. Mm -mm. Okay. That's pretty good. It's fruity, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So yeah, leave the seeds in the one. If you're just now joining, we're making a pico with tomato, onion, three kinds of onion, red onion, green onion, white onion, jalapeno, uh, uh, red onion, cilantro, garlic, uh, diced white onion. Lemon, lime juice and lime, lime zest. Lime zest and fresh tomato. And I'm going to put this roasted. And this roasted stuff right here, it's going to be delicious. Now if you 
You want it more spicy? Skip the jalapeno. Go for Serrano. Serrano? Serrano, excuse me. Serrano. Boom. And some olive oil and some garlic. So now let's reach in here and get these guys. Whoops. They running everywhere. They scared of me. <laughs> Lucky we're the only ones eating it. They could be scared. They're getting ate. I'm gonna get back up in here. Now these, I'm just gonna rough chop them. I'm not gonna chop them real fine. Start with the biggest ones. I'm just gonna come right down here in the middle. Cut that end off. Again, just a quick rough chop in there. Same thing. Cut this in off because it's a little woody. In the middle. You see how they're squishing out like that? You know what? I should have roasted some more so we can just put some on the taco. That's okay. I mean, you still can. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to back up because I'm just catching your arm now. Just a rough chop. Because this is smoky texture flavor. Yeah, I know I got last up on my cutting board. I should have cleaned it up, but we're almost done. In there. Done. I think we've got plenty of tasting spoons. We can. Yep. Yeah. I'm only that to the side. So. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know it was going to make this much pico. <laughs> so. so you never really realize how much it's going to make, baby, the blue bowl down there, the white and blue bowl at the bottom. Um, what have the other one? Baby, I'd say grab the white and blue bowl. Very. Um, you never realize how much you're really going to make, so I guess size up when it comes to the bowl, because right now this bowl is too full to mix. You want it to mix. You definitely want the flavors to mix. And then you can put that back in the smaller bowl to marry. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. It looks like a mess right now. But I guarantee you I'm going to clean it up in a second. So. Yeah. Let's see where we're at. It's a good looking pico. I might. Give me that lemon juice out there. I'm going to taste it here in a second. But okay. Get that lemon juice on there. Okay. Let's see what we got. It's definitely juicy. Mm -hmm. Here's the lemon. So fresh cracked pepper, like I've told you, is his favorite flavor. And salt and pepper to taste. Make sure that this is the flavor that you enjoy. Cumin? No, I'm a, I don't think I want to add cumin. Okay. It comes with the flavors. Just marry. So does it need the lemon or is it good? I'm going to let you test it. Okay. You tell me. I think it a little bit more spice, but... Okay. Let me taste. Let me give you a little bite of everything. Mmm. I think you should let it marry, mm -hmm. but it definitely doesn't need any more citrus or salt or pepper or anything. Okay. It's good. I'm going to save you to the side because you're going on my taco. And that is the pico. That's